Hello, this is Dr. Michael Edwards, founder and CEO of BioInfo Solutions, a data analytics company based out of Parker, Colorado. Uh, this entry is part one in a series of instructional videos detailing a meta-analysis we did on eight different human gene expression studies looking at papillary renal cell carcinoma. Uh, in this installment, I give some background on kidney cancer and detail some of the different types and subgroups identified in this disease. First, a little background on the kidney. These are two bean-shaped organs below the rib cage on the dorsal side. The main function of the kidney is to filter the blood of toxins and then to produce urine, which is then excreted from the body. Uh, the kidneys also produce hormones, and some of these help regulate blood pressure and also stimulate red blood cell production. Uh, just like any organ, it's divided into parts, and these are given here. Um, the nephron is the actual functional unit of the kidney. Uh, it is made up of a renal corpuscle, the initial filtering component, and a renal tubule that processes and carries away the filtered fluid. Um, as you can imagine, there's different forms of cancer, uh, kidney cancer, and a lot of this depends on where it arises in the organ. About 10% of all kidney cancers come from the renal pelvis, but the vast majority, 9%, come from this area here, the, the actual filtering tissue. Uh, this is called renal cell carcinoma, and it is a subtype of this renal cell carcinoma that we will be examining for our meta-analysis. Let me give you a few facts about kidney cancer. It is the 12th most common cancer in the world. Uh, in fact, the U.S. is ranked fourth highest in rates of kidney cancer diagnosed. Uh, the Czech Republic, Lithuania, and Slovakia make up the top three, which is odd. All those are former Eastern Bloc countries, kind of in the same area. Um, in the U.S., each year, about 64,000 people are diagnosed with kidney cancer, and over 14,000 people actually die from this disease in this country alone. Uh, there is both a gender and race bias with this disease. Men are approximately twice as likely to be diagnosed with this disease over women. And it's more prevalent in African Americans of both sexes, at least in this country, than the other races. Um, also, it's more prevalent in developed countries versus underdeveloped countries. Uh, there is good news with this cancer. Um, overall, it the, the survival rates are pretty good. The five-year survival rate for people with kidney cancer is about 74%. However, the survival rates depend on several factors, including the type of kidney cancer it is, where it arose in this organ, uh, the cell type, and the stage of the cancer when it's first diagnosed. Did you get to the cancer early enough, diagnose it early enough to, to actually treat it? Um, there are several subtypes of renal cell carcinoma, and this is based mainly on how the cells look under the microscope. And as I mentioned, each one of these cell types has its own characteristics and survival outcomes, which we will talk about later. But this is why we're concerned about this cancer, is that the rates of new diagnoses are increasing exponentially. Uh, and in fact, it, it's expected to be one of the fastest increasing cancers over the next 20 years. Uh, this is data from the UK just showing this trend and the predicted number of cases in the future. Here are some of the causes of kidney cancer, one of the main ones of these being smoking, uh, also being overweight, taking certain pain medications for a long time, or having high blood pressure. Uh, and we're going to talk about this even more, having certain genetic conditions. So certain methylation patterns or mutations in particular genes will make you more prone to this particular type of cancer. Also, being exposed to a chemical called trichloroethylene. Um, recently, this chemical was used to remove grease from metals, uh, but I found it interesting. I, I did some research on it. It was actually used as an inhaled anesthetic prior to 1960. So people are actually using a carcinogen to uh, knock people out. Uh, they don't use that anymore. Actually, halothane replaced this chemical. And anyone that works with mice or rats that you need to knock them out, you're probably using halothane. Here are some of the symptoms of kidney cancer. And I'd say for the most part, they're very similar to some of the symptoms you get with some of the other types of cancers. Although I would say that blood in the urine would definitely get your attention. And maybe that's why the survival rates are so much better in this cancer than maybe some of the others, is that uh, once a person starts peeing blood, maybe it's time to go to the doctor. And maybe because of this, they're diagnosed earlier. Who knows? 
as you can see, there's not many different types of therapies for kidney cancer. In fact, treatment options are usually based on what the cancer looks like under the microscope, and at least to my knowledge, aren't based on any genetic or molecular signatures inherent in the cancer. Surgery is usually a good option if caught early enough, and this can include radical or partial removal of the kidney and tumor. Uh, you can have non-surgical tumor treatments. Uh, you can use a needle and sonic energy to try to blast away the tumor, or you can try to freeze the tumor to get rid of it. Um, they are actually now starting to use immunotherapy, so the body's own immune system to try to target and destroy the tumor. Uh, this is in development. Uh, they're also using it with other tumors. But what I want to point out here is that there's only really two types of targeted molecular therapy. Uh, one of these being anti-angiogenesis therapy. So what you're doing is targeting the production of uh, blood vessels to the tumor. Uh, this usually involves somehow inhibiting the gene VEGF. And also what they're starting to use or what they have been using is mTOR inhibitors. So mTOR is a downstream effector of the PI3K AKT pathway. And it is responsible for controlling cell growth, proliferation, and survival, which is obviously key in for any type of cancer. Uh, this pathway has also been implicated in other cancers. And in particular, I find mTOR uh, quite active in lung cancer. Here's a slide showing the different types of kidney cancer, and as I mentioned before, they are differentiated by how they appear stained under a microscope. The most common type by far is clear cell renal cell carcinoma, given here on the left. Uh, this accounts for up to 75 to 80 percent of all kidney cancers. Uh, clear cell is thought to arise from the cells that line the tubule part of the nephron. Again, this is the functional unit of the kidney. Uh, this is the area that processes and carries away the filtered blood to make urine. Like its name would imply, the cells look clear and pale when viewed under a microscope. Uh, this type of kidney cancer is frequently due to a mutation in this gene, the von Hippel-Lindau gene, or VHL. VHL is a tumor suppressor that plays a key part in cellular oxygen sensing by targeting hypoxia-inducible factors. These are things like the HIF-1 and HIF-2 factors uh, for degradation. Hypoxia signaling plays a key role in angiogenesis, again, the formation of blood vessels. And therefore, this gene is believed to somehow inhibit VEGF signaling, which helps supply blood to the tumor. There are families with inherited mutations of VHL who develop kidney cancers in addition to other medical problems. But the, the majority of people, however, who develop clear cell have a non-inherited or sporadic version. The second most common type of kidney cancer is called papillary renal cell carcinoma, uh, given here in the red box. Uh, it accounts for about 15% of all kidney cancers. Uh, the name comes from the microscopic finger-like projections called papillae, uh, which took me forever to say, in some if not most of the tumors. There are two main types of papillary kidney cancer uh, given here. There's type one over here on the left in type 2, they, as you can see, they look very different under the microscope. Type 1 is typically less aggressive. The survival rates are much better with this than the type 2. Also, a mutation in the MET gene is frequently associated with this type, type 1. Uh, the MET gene is a proto-oncogene. It's a receptor tyrosine kinase that when it binds to its ligand, which is a growth factor, activates a wide range of uh, signaling networks, which include proliferation, motility, migration, and invasion, which is obviously key for the cancer to advance. Type 2 is also associated with a particular mutation. This is a mutation in the fumarate hydratase gene. This is a component of the citric acid cycle, or TCA cycle. Um, a mutation in this gene will typically signify a metabolic shift to aerobic glycolysis. So what it's doing is generating more energy uh, for cellular proliferation and growth. Again, type 2 is more typically more severe than type 1, and its survival rates are much worse. There are some other rare forms of kidney cancer that I'm not really going to go into, but what I'd like to do now is just kind of focus on the papillary type and give you some more information and background on, on uh, this form of the kidney cancer, since this is, will be the focus of our analysis. 
Here are some more facts on papillary renal cell carcinoma. Males are five times more likely than females to get this disease, although which seems to be much higher than the two to one ratio observed in other forms of kidney cancer. Um, little is currently known about the genetic basis of the sporadic form of the disease, but with the hereditary forms, we usually see a, MET, a mutation in MET, which, as I mentioned, typically happens in the type one form. Uh, Patients receive treatment simply based on disease stage. So whether you have type 1 or type 2 isn't going to dictate your treatment. It's how advanced the cancer is. Um, as I mentioned, two main types, type 1 being the, on average, the less aggressive form, and type 2 the more aggressive. Um, this type 2, what we're going to see, can be actually divided, subdivided into three subgroups. So we're going to take a look at that. And again, each one of these subtypes has its own specific genetic alterations associated with it. So when we compare these two in our meta-analysis, we should see a difference in the gene expression profiles between these two different forms of cancer. Um, some of the genes that are typically found mutated with it with papillary renal cell carcinoma include these. Uh, and these are found in mutations in these genes are found in about 36% of all papillary renal cell carcinoma tumors. Here's a really good study demonstrating the different types and subtypes of papillary renal cell carcinoma. Uh, the investigators, I think there was a thousand co-authors on this paper, maybe not quite that many, but there was a lot. Uh, they did a comprehensive molecular characterization of 161 primary papillary kidney tumors. Uh, these were all human. On the left here, they cluster the different tumors based on differences in exon sequencing, copy number analysis, messenger RNA and microRNA levels, DNA methylation patterns, and proteomic analysis. When they basically cluster based on these differences in all these molecular characterizations, they come up with four different subgroups of papillary renal cell carcinoma. Uh, the C1 group is primarily the type 1, and you can see the different aspects. Again, you can see the number of MET mutations in each, and you can see that predominantly these MET mutations are occurring in type 1 versus type 2. Uh, they also found a, so in the type 2 subtype, they find three subgroups. Uh, there is a 2A given here, a 2B over here, and a 2C, which has this special methylation pattern. These are C and G island methylation phenotype is what they're calling it. And this seems to be exclusive to this subtype of type two. When you look at the actual survival rates of these different clusters over here on the right, you can see that the C1, which is primarily type one, has the best survival rates, followed by type 2A, which seems to be very similar to type one. Uh, there is also the 2B, which seems to be less than the type A. And then the worst survival rate, the most severe form of this cancer, is the one with the methylation islands in it. And as you can see, all of these subject, all the subjects died before 50 months. What this is telling me as a bioinformatician is that this cancer is very different. And that the two forms of directed ther molecular therapy we currently have for it are probably not enough. The question becomes, how do we use all of this information, not only from this study, but all the information out there that's looking at the exact same disease? How do we use that to come up with new therapies to better identify the cancers? Um, so in the next series of videos, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to do a meta-analysis using a lot of information from studies looking at papillary renal cell carcinoma. This concludes the background information on papillary renal cell carcinoma. In the next set of videos, I will describe our own characterization of this disease using eight different pulmonary renal cell carcinoma gene expression studies containing 17 different comparisons, looking at tumor versus normal kidney or tumor versus other forms of the disease. Part two will describe how we used Illumina's base-based correlation engine to collect these data and process the information so we can compare all these studies together. As always, if you would like to be notified when these videos come out, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There should be a link coming up right now. Or you can join my blog, which will have a link in the des description. Until next time, thanks.